First, that the teaching that I am currently busy with the preparation of the bride will end with the overcomers. But the last month, as I start preparing for my own daughter's marriage on Saturday, that took place on Saturday, the 21st of September, I sense in my spirit it is more than just a marriage but a prophetic action. At first, I thought it was my own idea on this. But when I received a, a message from Korea from Christine de Beer on Sunday morning, the 22nd of September, confirming the invitation to a marriage, I realized that the marriage ceremony that took place on Saturday has a much more prophetic meaning that I am currently aware of. Henceforth, I want to share the message of this ceremony that took place on Saturday with the listener. I actually started the ceremony by asking the question to all the guests. I like to make sure that everybody that is currently sitting here in front of us did receive an invitation. Is there anybody sitting today in front of us not receiving an invitation? And nobody raised their hands. So I assume that everybody attending the marriage first received their invitation. But when I looked to the audience, I saw many chairs open, which I made then a conclusion that there are also people who did receive their invitation but I did not attend. 
As a matter of fact, a servant went out and he called many to the wedding ceremony, but they would not come. Each and everybody had a certain excuse not to come to, to the wedding feast. And then the Lord said, Now you go therefore to the highways and you call as many as you can find for this marriage supper. And the parable actually ends in verse 14 when the Lord say, Many are called, but few are chosen. You see, the invitation went out. A few people attend the marriage ceremony between my daughter and her husband. Many were invited, but only a few attended the ceremony. And then I am reading a similar marriage in Revelation 19. There is a marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready for her husband. Verse 9, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I want to ask to the listener, are you called? to this marriage supper of the Lamb. My question now is, if there is a marriage to take place between the Lamb and his wife, the bride, why is it that Jesus, God's Son, need a wife? Did you ask yourself that question? Why is it that Jesus needs a wife? We must look into the Old Testament, I believe. That is a mystery hidden. And about a week or two before my own daughter's wedding, I believe that the Lord revealed to me the primary reason of a marriage in the Bible, a marriage between man and his wife, and that is also the reason why Jesus Christ needs a wife. So let's go into the scriptures. We at this stage already know that everything is concealed in the Old Testament, but revealed in the New Testament. So to find our answer about the primary main reason for a marriage between man and wife, and henceforth also between Christ Jesus and his wife, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, we find that the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Verse 9, And the Lord had planted the garden, and he put the man whom he made in the garden. That word put in the Hebrew means nuach, and nuach means dominion. So when he put Adam in the garden of Eden, his intention was that Adam must have dominion over the world. So we find that also in chapter 1, verse 26, when the Lord said that let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So the intention for the Lord to make man is for him to have dominion over everything in the earth. But then verse 10 is referring to a river went out of Eden. I want you to remember this river coming out of Eden. We will come back to it. Verse 16 and 17, he then gave Adam a choice. You can eat from the tree of life, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge it is forbidden. When you eat that tree, you will surely die. But verse 18, it's very interesting. When the Lord came to Adam and he said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. But instead of making a helper for Adam, verse 19 and 20, Adam now first go forth. And he start giving the animals names. Why is that? For me it's interesting. The Lord first said, It is not good for you to be alone. But now he commanded Adam first to go and call all the living creatures and name them. In verse 20, So Adam gave the names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam... 
there was not find a helper comparable to him. It seems to me if the Lord was saying to Adam, Adam, go you forth and name the animals and see if there is any of them comparable to you. And there was none. So for me, the marriage is not just about companionship. It is not just to come together, to have intimacy. Yes, that is true. It is all true that you need a companionship. You need to have intimacy. But that was not the main reason for it, because he could not find anything comparable to him. And then the Lord, verse 21, he calls Adam into a deep sleep, and he took one of his ribs, and he made Eve. Why did the Lord make Eve from the rib. You see, the rib out of the body of Adam, the part that is the closest to the heart of Adam, he make a wife, a bride for Adam. Now, likewise, God the Father is saying to his son, Yeshua Messiah, out of my body, I will prepare a bride for you. Those who are living in a close relationship to your heart will become your bride. This is profound, saints. But the reason why Adam needs a wife, why is Jesus Christ in a need for a wife, is not yet been revealed. Let us see what the scripture is saying to us. Adam was incomplete to rule and to reign as a king priest as God created him to be. And that is the reason why Adam needs a wife. Only then, with his wife aside from him, only then, with his wife at his side, Adam can now become complete to rule and to reign. Revelation 5.10 is very clear, that God made us unto our God kings and priests. Why? So that we can reign with him. Revelation 22, and now we will reign with him forever and ever. I know it might sound foreign for you and I might shock some of your theology, but Jesus Christ is in a need for a wife, a bride, to rule and reign with him on the earth. Currently, Jesus cannot rule and reign on earth without a bride. Just as Adam and Eve could not rule and reign on the earth to be complete on the earth, to have dominion over the fish and the everything on the earth is a typology of Christ to become complete, to rule and to reign on this earth. If you listen, or maybe I will prepare a teaching on authority. If you understand authority that Christ gave to his people on this earth, you will realize that Christ is in a need for a wife, a bride, so that he can come complete to rule and to reign on this earth. The answer in this is all about relationships. What about relationships? First, the Lord chose 72 disciples and he sent all of them two to out to rule and to reign. But out of the 72, Christ chose 12 special disciples. And out of the 12, he only chose three disciples who walked very close with him. Who were they? They were Peter, James and John. But out of that three, there was one beloved disciple. And that was John. When the Lord for the first time uh, have communion with his disciples just before his crucifixion, he was making the statement that one of you will betray me. And everybody was asking, who will that be? Might it be me? me? And Peter was looking to John because John was the only disciple learning on the breast of Christ Jesus. You see, he was the beloved one. And Peter said, John, ask Jesus, who will that be? Jesus revealed to John everything of the future on Patmos. And that is exactly what Christ will do with his bride. He is revealing his most secret plans to his bride because they are living closest to his heart. 
that speaks of those closest to his heart will be chosen out of the body of Christ to become his bride. Now look what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 15.45. The first Adam was made a living soul. Remember Genesis 2, seven, we said that Adam become a living soul. But then Paul is saying the last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. So Adam died, but Christ, the last Adam, who became a life-giving spirit, was resurrected by his father and he never died again. And that was the main reason why Jesus came to Nicodemus and he said, listen Nicodemus, you must be born again. This time not from a corruptible seed, but from an incorruptible seed. Nicodemus, how is it that you do not know these things that you must born again? This time out of the water and in the spirit, John 3, 5. And then verse 7, the Lord is saying, you must be born from above. You see, when Adam was a living soul, he became a living soul, he died. Because he was not yet born from above. But when you are born from above, you become a life-giving spirit. When Adam saw Eve, the first thing that he said, verse 23, this is now bone of bone and flesh of my flesh. That is exactly the same words that we proclaim during our communion. During communion, we will say we eat this bread. Bone by bone, flesh by flesh, the flesh and bones of Jesus Christ for our internal life. So Jesus explained this to the people when he went to the other side, the multitude followed him and he said to them, you are not looking for the miracles. You are looking for the bread that I fed you yesterday. But I am telling you that I am the living bread. When you eat me, you will eat eternal life. The whole chapter 6 of John is explaining it about the living bread. And Jesus said, verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. And earlier he, he was making a huge story about the people in the wilderness. And he said, your forefathers ate manna, but they died. But if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of this world. You see, that was a typology when Adam, the first Adam, cried out, this is my bone of bone and flesh of my flesh. It is if Jesus wants to say, now my bride is from my bones and my flesh. When you ate me every time during communion, you will become my bride. The bride is the overcomers. Our previous teaching was about the overcomers. I fully discussed the concept of overcomers. So please go first and listen to the teaching of the overcomers. But to sum it up and summarize it, Revelation 2 and 3 is explaining, if you overcome, I will give you a reward. Revelation 2.10 is saying that we must be faithful unto death. That speaks of a crucifixion of the flesh. And then you will receive the crown of life. How will we overcome? According to Revelation 12, 11, we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You see, the blood alone cannot allow us to overcome. You need a testimony of your word. And they did not love their lives unto death exactly what Revelation 2.10 is speaking about, that you will be faithful unto death. It has nothing to do with your salvation. It has all to do with your victory's crown. Revelation 3.11 is saying with a warning, hold fast that no one takes thy crown. Satan knows he cannot steal your salvation, but he will try his best to steal the crown, the crown of victory, the crown of of righteousness, as Paul explained it in 2 Timothy 4, 6-8. I have fought an excellent fight. There is a crown of righteousness waiting for me as a reward in heavens. And to receive that, Paul is saying in Philippians 3, 13, 
I forget everything about the past and I fasten my heart to the future. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory's prize through the anointing of Jesus Christ. And then Paul is saying, So let all who are fully mature have the same passion. You see, if you are immature, a baby in Christ, you will not have this passion. Therefore, it is for the mature, the bride of Christ, there is a reward for you in heaven's waiting. That is exactly what the Lord is saying in Revelation 22, 12. Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So now let's summarize the word for the marriage. First and foremost, God made a bride for Adam to be in unity so that they can have dominion on the earth to rule and reign. Likewise, the Lord is taking the body of Christ out of the body. He will have a bride for Christ, which is fully matured in Christ, in unity, who will rule and reign forever. That is profound science. The very first commandment, the very first assignment that God gave Adam just after he made Eve, Genesis 2, 2, 4. And you shall leave your father and your mother's house. Saints, if you do not leave your father and your mother's house, eight out of ten times you will have problems in your marriage. And then Solomon is talking about the unity. Two are better than one. Ecclesia 4, 9 to 12. A threefold core is not quickly broken. We need one another. Wife needs a husband and the husband needs his wife so that they can be strong to rule and reign. God is your provider. You see, in the marriage, normally, the woman is expecting the man to do certain things that he cannot. And I want to encourage each and every spouse today Look up high, your provider is Jesus Christ, not your husband, not your spouse. Philippians 4.19 is saying, And my God will supply in all your needs according to his riches in the glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus himself explained it in the Gospels. Matthew 6, he is saying, Look at the birds. They do not sow, nor do they reap. Nor do they gather into the bonds, and yet my heavenly Father feeds them. And then he asks, Are you not worth much more than they? Why are you worrying about tomorrow? I know it's normal to do that. But for Christ is giving us a warning. I am your provider. Make him your provider. And unfold everything off your shoulders. And be free in Christ Jesus. Here are some warnings to you. James 3.16, when I read it in the King James Bible, I made a decision in my house that there will be no more strife, no more envy. James 3.16 is saying, when there is envy and strife, there is confusion and all evil works. You open the door for the devil to come in. Stop with your quarreling. Stop with quarreling so the devil cannot enter. Because in 1 Peter 5.8, he gives us a next warning. The devil is walking like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. While I was preparing this, the morning of Saturday the 21st, when I read this, I don't know why the Lord pointed me to the previous two verses, 6 and 7, before you get at 1 Peter 5, 8. Verse 6 is saying, If you bow low in God's awesome presence, he will eventually exalt you as you leave the timing in his hand. This is profound. Just leave the time in his hand that he can do his works. What works? His works of your soul salvation. And then verse 7. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. Isn't that words of encouragement? For the devil is walking like a roaring lion, but I, I am your provider. Leave it in my hands. 
Leave your worries and your stress upon him and he will tenderly care for you. James 4.17 You submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. If you only resist the devil, he will not flee. You must submit to God. If you only submit to God, the devil cannot flee. You must resist him. It is one coin with two sides. Submit to God and resist the devil and he shall flee. This is huge. This is major. Philippians 3.13 Forget all of the past. Fasten your heart to the future. I run the race reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory's prize. I don't know why is it that people is holding so fast on the past. They cannot move forward. For you to move forward, to receive your prize, the victory's prize, the reward, forget the past. Wipe it out by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 3.11 Beware that no one takes your crown. Hold fast to it. The devil is the one who wants to come and steal and destroy. He wants to steal the crown. Hold fast that nobody is taking it for you. And now we need fellowship in the spirit. If you are in a marriage and you walk in the flesh, the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Galatians 5.17 And when that happens, you cannot do the things that you would. Paul is warning it in Romans 8, 7 and 8 again. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you cannot please God in the flesh, it means you cannot please your spouse in the flesh. Revelation 12, 10. Be faithful unto the death, which speaks of a crucifixion of the flesh. Then you will receive the crown of your life. You need to move from a living soul to be a life-giving spirit. We are not any more human beings, but we are spiritual beings. The first Adam was made a living soul, but the last Adam was made a life-giving spirit. Now, this is how we are doing it. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who lives, but it is Christ who lives in me. Colossians 2.27 let me tell you this mystery to the Gentiles, Christ in you. Do you know why the Gentiles? Because the Gentiles were the nations. It was only God and the Jewish people. But now after the crucifixion of Christ Jesus, the door opens for the nations, the Gentiles, each and everybody. Now based on the blood of the Lamb has the right to enter. Now Christ can come and lives in you. Revelation 22 in conclusion. Revelation 22, the heading of it in the Passion Bible is saying, The Restoration of Eden. Isn't this good news? Genesis 1 and 2 is about the pure river coming out of Eden. And Revelation 22 opens, And he showed me a pure river of water of life. It is coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. That is the living water of internal life that the Lord Restore now in the book of Revelation. Verse 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that hears say, Come. And let him that is thirsty, Come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. You see, the Lord invites you now to come and drink from this pure river. I am the one who gives you the internal life. Come, if you are thirsty, come. You will drink and you will never be thirsty again. And then he is saying that there shall be no longer any curses there. And his name, the name of Yeshua, shall now be in your forehead. Not on your forehead. The Jubilee Bible is explaining it. That his name will now be in your forehead. That means that you will operate with the mind of Christ. And then God is answering, surely I am coming quickly. Saints, the reason for your marriage is to become complete in Christ, so that you can rule and reign forever with Him. Amen and Amen. Good morning everybody. Today is Sunday the 22nd of September. I lifted up the day and asked the Father, is there anything He wants to say to us? Because I went to heaven with this... Um, uh, comment to the Father and I said 
we had such a huge build up and such an amazing time lately many people in the sense of something happened but now it's over and we're going to hit this really low in the spirit because now what's coming next or is there anything coming or um, it's this anticlimax scenario and then suddenly um, he smiled and I w went into this vision and I'm going to, uh, I drew it the best I could um, and um, I, I'm going to just tell you what I saw. Suddenly I was in a place where I was invited to a secret meeting with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit and, and wisdom and in this place in front of me appears what looked like a dove or a bird but it was white so it was really for me it symbolized um, the Holy Spirit speaking to me in the form of a dove and out of, the dove was hanging flapping its wings in the air I could see it from um, the back so the head was looking right ahead and I could see it from behind and suddenly out of the wings on both sides left and right um, feathers started falling but when they hit the table they started writing they were like full pins and uh, feather pins and they started writing something and I said father what are you doing and he says look and see what it is and I wrote down the words today in the spiritual realm in heaven there's a huge preparation for a feast and I asked him immediately does that have anything to do with your in um, your instituted feasts um, your appointed times the ones that we are actually going to um, celebrate and he said mm -mm, this is a different feast um, this is a different celebration um, you are invited. This is your invitation. And the Holy Spirit started writing. The feathers was moving on its own. And it started writing this invitation. And he didn't want to tell me anything more about what are we invited to. But there is a celebration in heaven. And we have received a spiritual invitation. So um, really seek the Father and saying, what is he inviting you to? On heaven, in heaven or on the earth and what is he planning because he said don't worry there's not such a long waiting time before you do something again there's a huge invitation coming your way so father I, I just want to add this last night I was dreaming of weddings the whole time the theme and every separate dream from when I fell asleep to when I woke up was a dream of a wedding uh, uh, a wedding being prepared so different people, different scenarios. I didn't know the people, some people I knew. It was just the whole night was a dream of wedding preparation. So I really feel that when I, my, I least expected anything this morning and I really didn't expect something similar to what I was dreaming the whole night. So that was quite extraordinary. So I already in this vision this morning on the 22nd got the confirmation of the revelation of there's a huge wedding coming so perhaps one of you listening there's a wedding coming for you and or you have been invited to a wedding you will definitely attend a wedding or you will receive a wedding invitation shortly in the natural but there's more to this and it's not the fulfillment of a feast it's not one of his appointed feasts this is something different so Father, I pray that you will minister with your Holy Spirit into the people's lives and into their spirits. What are you inviting them to and what is this invitation all about? I pray this morning for revelation, divine revelation of your truths and your divine information out of heaven so that we on earth know exactly what's happening in heaven and so that we can align ourselves with what is happening in heaven. So Father, this day speak to your people and minister to us. Let us all receive our wedding invitation and let us all say yes um, and make our time available to understand and to hear more. What is this invitation about? I honor you for your word, Lord, and I ask and seek for wisdom and understanding as we unravel your invitation. Amen. <music>